Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are gonna begin setting up our Godot project. So here I am in our project manager and we are gonna go ahead and create ourselves a brand new project. So I am gonna go ahead and just call this one, let's just say our Godot NPC AI. Okay, we can then choose a project path click on the create new folder to create a new folder in that path. And then we can click create and edit to start up the editor and begin creating our project. Okay, so here we are inside of Godot. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is create our root scene here. And this is gonna be of type 2D because we are making a sort of top-down pixel art 2D game where we can walk around and talk with NPCs. Although if you do wanna make this 3D, you can of course do that. Um, the overall dialogue system is pretty interchangeable with 2D and 3D and any other sort of type of game you want to create. So I'm just going to click on 2D scene here. I'm going to rename the node 2D to be main because that's my, that's what I generally like to do of these. Uh, we can then save this and we're just going to save it as main.tscn. Okay, so our scene is saved. We can click on the play button at the top right corner. Click select current so it loads into this scene every time we click play. And we can then of course see our game right here. So we've got that all set up. Now what we can do is start making some requests, okay? Because we want to start talking to our AI. Now to do this, we are going to go ahead and create ourselves a brand new script. But we first of all need a node to attach that to. So I'm gonna go over to our scene view here. I'm gonna click on the plus and we are gonna create a new node. Now this node isn't really gonna have a presence in the world. So it can just be a base node right here, create that. I'm going to rename it to be Game Manager. Okay. And then what we can do is then we can go over to the inspector here, go over to our script property, click on the little arrow, and we're going to create a brand new script for our Game Manager called, as you guess, Game Manager. So we'll create that here, and here we go. So now inside of our code, what are we going to do? Well, first of all, we're gonna delete the process function since that is not gonna be needed uh, for this course, okay? We only really need the ready function um, that is already laid out in the base script here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a number of variables. Now we are gonna have quite a few variables because we do need these to keep track of the different parameters we might want to tweak. So first of all, we're gonna have a variable for our API key. So I'm just gonna go API underscore key. This is gonna be of type string. So we're gonna define the type of string and this is gonna be equal to, of course, a string. Now this is gonna be the API key that we just created before. So I'm gonna paste that in right here. There we go. Then what we're gonna need is we are going to need a URL. Now the URL is the actual uh, website URL link that we are going to be sending our API request to because in Godot, we are going to use something known as a HTTP request. That's basically where we can send something to a server, to a website, and then wait until we get a response back, okay? So in order to do that, we need a URL to send our things to. So we're gonna have var URL of type string. This is going to be equal to HTTPS colon slash slash API, whoops, API dot openai.com forward slash v1 forward slash chat forward slash completions. Okay, and do make sure this is exact because this stuff is uh, needing to be basically uh, exactly the same as this for it to work. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a variable for our temperature. This is gonna be of type float and we're gonna have this at around 0 0.5. Now temperature basically just defines how uh, consistent or sporadic you want your AI generations to be. So for our dialogue, if you're noticing that, you know, it's, it's, it's either a bit cookie cutter or it's a bit too crazy, you can adjust this value back and forth from zero to one uh, in order to find tune it. But we're just gonna keep it at 0 0.5 for now, that's, as that's about the middle ground. We then need a variable for our max tokens, which is gonna be an int. And this is going to be 1024, okay? And a token is basically like a character or a word, okay? And this is basically the maximum amount that we can use with the AI, um, but we're probably not gonna be exceeding this. So then what we're gonna do is we need to create a variable for our headers. Now, when you are making uh, requests to an API, generally you wanna send over some information um, that is more 
metadata, more, more information that's in the background that uh, it just needs to know, okay? And we need two things. So we're gonna go equals, we're gonna create a new array here and we're gonna have two things in our array. First of all, we're gonna have a string and this one is gonna be content dash type colon application forward slash JSON. Now this basically means that the uh, the format that we're going to be sending and the format that we're going to be getting in return is going to be of type JSON, which is basically a way that data can be serialized and sent over for us to use. We're then going to go comma. And the second one is going to be authorization colon bearer. Now you do need to make sure that these also are case sensitive and are written exactly as I have right here. So bearer, we're then going to go space and then we're going to go plus API underscore key. Okay, so this is pretty much where we are sending our API key um, to the API so that it knows who we are um, and it knows that we actually have a valid key and we should be able to use the API. Next up, we need a variable for the model. Now with uh, OpenAI, they have a number of different models to use that are used for different purposes. For us, our model is going to be GPT-3.5 dash turbo okay and this is basically just your run-of-the-mill chat completion api okay so if you've ever used chat gpt before on a website this is basically it you send the message it sends you a response and you can go back and forth okay then what we need is we then need a variable for the messages which is going to be equal to an empty array uh, and a message is pretty much going to be either something that we send to the AI or something that the AI sends back. Now, the reason why we need to keep track of all of our messages is because when it comes to ChatGPT um, and the open AI models, whenever we make a request, we need to send all of our chat history over to it, okay? Because otherwise it won't remember unless we ourselves are keeping track of it and send it all over, okay? Um, so that is why generally the more and more messages you send to the AI, the sort of slower it gets. That is because each time you're sending a message, you're sending the entire chat history over. Um, and that keeps, and that of course keeps growing the more messages you send. So we've got that. Now what we need to do is we also need to go ahead and create another variable for our request. And this is going to be of type HTTP request. This is a node inside of Godot. And this is basically the node that is going to manage all of the sending information to the API and receiving it and then telling us when we have received it so we can then do something with that. Okay. And down here inside of the ready function, which gets called right at the start of the game, we are going to create that request. So to do this, we're going to go request equals HTTP request dot new. So we'll create a brand new HTTP request node. We then need to add that as a child to our scene here. Okay. So that it is, so, so it basically has a place inside of our uh, scene tree. Then what we need to do is we need to connect this HTTP request so that when it has received information, we have a function call. Okay. Because right now, it's not really doing anything. So we're going to go down here and create a new function called on request completed. And this is going to have four parameters, result, response code, headers, and body. Okay. And we're just going to chuck in a pass right here, just so um, it's empty for now. And then up here inside the ready function, what we're going to do is we are going to go request dot connect. So we are connecting uh, a signal to a function, okay? Very similar to if you go into the node panel here and connect these signals, it's basically the same thing, but we're doing it inside of a script. So the signal that we wanna connect is going to be request underscore completed. So when we have received something uh, from the API, this signal is gonna be called and we want to connect it to the on underscore request completed function, okay? So there we go. So whenever we send something with our API and we get a response, this function down here is going to be called and then we can read, okay, what do we get in response? So in the next lesson, we're going to be continuing on with this and we're going to actually begin sending and receiving information. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all then in the next lesson. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to continue on with our script right here and we're going to set it up so that we can finally send a request to the OpenAI servers and get a response back. 
So in the previous lesson, we set up all of our variables. We uh, basically created our HTTP request node and set it up so that once we receive information from whatever request we are making, this function down here gets called. So now what we're going to do is we are going to create a function that we want to call whenever we want to basically send some dialogue over. Okay, so whenever we want to talk to the API, this is the function that we're going to call and we are going to call it function dialogue underscore request and sending over a player dialogue parameter here. Now inside of this function, we need to do, we need to do a number of things. Okay, first of all, what we're going to do is we need to create ourselves a new message and add it to our messages array. Okay, because remember, um, whenever we are sending over, uh, whenever we want to talk to the AI, we need to send over all of our previous messages as well. And to do that, um, we're going to first of all begin by adding a new message to that list, which is the current one. So for this, we're going to go messages dot append. So we're adding in a new um, element to the array here. We're going to create two squiggly brackets like this, and we're going to have two values inside of this object. The first one is if we create a string, we're going to say role, and this colon is going to be equal to user. Now let's actually make it so it's a bit easier to see this. Okay, something like that. There we go, user. And then we're going to have content, which is going to be our player dialog. Okay. So what we're doing here is we are basically um, adding a new object to our messages array here. And, it, and that object contains two values. It contains a value called role, which is equal to user and a value of content, which is equal to whatever we are sending over here as a parameter. Now role, this is basically user. So this is us saying something. And when we get a response from the server, it will also send back a message and that message will have a role of system and the content will be whatever the AI is saying back to us. Okay, so we're basically creating our little text box that we are sending over in a way. Then what we need to do is we need to create the body of our request. This is what we, this is basically what's going to contain our messages, uh, the temperature, the max tokens, the API model uh, that we want to use. Um, we're basically compiling all, a lot of our variables here into a body that we are then going to send over through the request. So here I'm going to create a variable called body, and this is going to be equal to json.new.stringify. Okay, add a squealy bracket here and open that up. Now, what we're doing with this line here is we are basically um, making it so that all of the objects and the values that we add inside of this body, they are going to get turned into a JSON format. Because when we are talking to the AI, we need to send over our values and our requests in a JSON format. And this is basically what's going to do that automatically for us. So in here, we can go something such as messages, okay, colon, sending over the messages, comma, we can then go to a new line here. The next thing we need to send is our temperature. So temperature, uh, make sure all of this is also spelt correctly because um, it is going to be needed uh, in order for the AI to understand what we actually want from it. So temperature, we can then send over our max tokens, max tokens. And finally, we want to send over the model that we want it to use. So model like so, and there we go. So we are creating our message, we are adding it to the messages uh, array. We are then creating the body of our request, which is sending our, which is basically compiling our messages, temperature, max tokens, and model. Now what we need to do is actually send this request off. And to do that, we're gonna create another variable here, and we're gonna call this one our, uh, we'll call it send request equals. We're gonna access that request um, HTTP request node that we created up in the ready function dot request. And for this function, we need to give it a few things. First of all, the URL. So we'll send over the URL variable. We need to give it the headers. So we already have that headers variable. So we'll send that over. We then need to send over the method. So what type of request is this? And as you can see, there are a large number of different types of uh, requests we can make. Um, some of these might be getting, some of these might be deleting things, but for us, we want to be posting. And posting basically means we are sending something over. Okay, so method underscore post. Then what we want to do is send over the body. 
And that is pretty much it. So Godot is then going to automatically set this all up for us. It's going to communicate with the server. The server is then going to send a response back. Uh, and we need to make sure that this response is valid because if it's an error, we probably want to know. So what I'm going to do, go to go to a new line here and we are just going to go if send request doesn't equal okay. Okay, so basically if this is anything but okay, then we want to know. So we're just going to go print and we're just going to go there was an error. Okay, so if this is not working, we're going to be sending an error. Now, what we can do is we can go down to our on request completed function. So if this request that we are sending here is successful and we receive information back, then that means this function is going to be called. And inside of this function, uh, we can actually then see what the AI has responded. So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to delete the pass. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called JSON. This is going to be equal to JSON.new. So we're creating a new object there. We're then going to pass the information that we got from the server. Okay. And remember, this comes as a JSON format. So we need to convert that from JSON into something that we can easily access and work with in Godot. So we're going to then go into go JSON.pass. And what we want to pass is going to be our body. So that's one of the parameters dot get underscore string underscore from underscore UTF eight. Okay. So basically what we're doing here is we are just getting the string, um, the, the string, which is basically the compressed compacted JSON format. We are then going to convert that into something that we can access. So then what we want to do, create a variable here called response equals JSON dot get underscore data. Then what we can do finally is get the message that we got as a response. So variable message equals is going to be our response. Now this response is an array with objects in it. So the first one we want to do is response. We then want to get our choices out of all the different choices. We want to get the first one. So the first element in our choices array is going to be zero. Then we want to get the message. And then in that message, we want to get the content, okay? And that is going to get the message that the AI has sent to us. And then what we can do is we can just print it out. So print message like so. Okay, so we have this all set up. Now, how do we actually go about testing it out? Well, pretty much we just need to call the dialog request function. So inside of the ready function, what I'm gonna do is after we've set up our HTTP request node, I'm just gonna call the dialog request and let's just ask it something, okay? So then we can just talk to it as if we are talking to an AI. Um, so I'm just gonna go here, um, explain the Godot engine in 20 words. Save that. And if we press play, we should see after a couple seconds over here in the output, something get printed. So I'm gonna press play. And if we look down here inside of the output, you'll see it says Godot is a free and open source game development engine. Uh, and yep, yeah, it basically explains um, that because it is responding to our request. So you can see that it does indeed work. We can change this around. Um, we can say, for example, uh, how do I get a node in GD script? Save that, press play. You know, just as if you're talking to chat GPT, it's basically the exact same thing as instead though, we are talking to it inside of uh, our Godot game, okay, which is really cool. So as you can see down here in the output, it of course sends that information back. And there we go. So we've got the ability to start to communicating with the API, connecting and talking to ChatGPT, but we don't want to do just that. We want to basically connect this to a game so that we can talk to NPCs and have them respond in the way that an NPC would respond. So how do we get from this to that? Well, in the next lesson, we are going to look at setting that up. We're going to create our dialogue box. We're going to set up some NPCs. We're going to set up NPC rules, dialogue rules, uh, NPC different personalities, descriptions of what they look like, uh, where they are, and all this other contextual stuff that is going to create some fully fleshed NPCs that you can add to your games. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all then in the next lesson.